Hi, this is Colin with Wireless Communications Technology. This is going to be the pilot episode of this channel as I've attempted to record three different structured episodes on various topics. Over the last two years now, and I've not liked how any of them have turned out, so I'm just going to wing it. I have a background in LAN mobile radio and IP networking and specialize in infrastructure in the infrastructure side of two-way radio systems. So I've dealt with a lot of P25 systems, I've dealt with a lot of DMR systems. Um, so this episode is going to be about how to program a Motorola R1225 repeater, um, whether you want to be using it for GMRS, uh, commercial, or amateur use. The R1225 came out in the uh, late 1990s, and it's part of the 1225 line. Uh, it is a uh, it replaced the GR300 and GR500 repeaters, which were two GM300. Uh, uh, radios interfaced with a RIC with a full duplex unit. They come in various uh, in several bands and various power outputs and also in several configurations such as the desktop mount, the GR1225, the rack mount, the RKR1225, and the uh, full duplex module itself, just the R1225. So I'm going to be programming a R1225 and I'm going to be using a uh, Windows 7 32-bit with a Motorola rib and a uh, and version for the software. Now I am running in a uh, virtual machine with ESXi and the uh, virtual machine host is actually passing the serial connection through to the rib and it's a physical serial port. Uh, if you're doing this at home, a USB to serial adapter will work, but you have to be using a 32-bit version of Windows. I have not tested it with Windows 10 or 11, but Windows 7 and below will run fine as long as it's 32-bit. So let's get started. I'm going to launch the RSS. This is version 4, which was specifically built for XP. Uh, in re reality, they made some uh, uh, optimizations for NT-based systems as the previous versions of the software were based on uh, DOS architecture. So uh, my VM here only has one COM port, but uh, if the computer configuration you can select the COM port. Uh, pretty standard with Motorola serial devices is going to be 9600 bits per second with an 8-in-1 parity. So I'm going to go ahead and read this radio. and we have successfully read the radio so we're going to look at the information here and it is a R1225 the model number M which stands for a mobile chassis 0 which means it is a 1 to 10 watt uh, model 4 is a UHF band GRC stands for the uh, R1225 platform so, uh, and that next nine means that it is a, uh, that the uh, deviation is selectable, so you can set it for narrowband or wideband operation. Uh, we get more information about the bands, the band coverage right here, uh, 44, 444 to 474 megahertz. Uh, modes is Motorola, is old school Motorola for uh, how many channels? Up to 16. Uh, you repeaters typically only ever use one though. So uh, we're going to go into the accessory settings first. And everything here looks to be okay. Uh, we've got a uh, pin here set up for repeater knockdown. Uh, I don't necessarily need to change anything on here, so I'm not going to. Uh, now we can go over to that's signaling not doing any signaling uh, so let's go over to radio wide uh, in this case I'm going the operational mode now my R1225 was part of an LTR trunking system so it was configured to use an external 
repeater controller, so that is optioned here. Um, I'm just turning it into a unidirectional repeater, which the 1225 has an integrated controller. So we're going to uh, enable the CWID. We're going to uh, enable the courtesy beep, so the Roger beep at the end of the tail of the transmission. And for later use, if I ever decide to interface this to a tone remote or something, I'm going to set that audio to flat. And now over here on CW ID, I am going to select strip PL and I am also going to set the interval at, leave the interval at 15 minutes, which is the uh, commercial and GMRS standard 10 minutes for amateur. Uh, only with repeater ID activity, so it's only going to ID when the repeater's used and not every 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to leave the frequency fine, but here you would uh, put in your call sign for ID. And uh, that strip PL feature is there to, uh, it does not send the PL tone when you are IDing. So if you have PL uh, set to receive on your radio, you won't ever hear it ID, which is a feature I like. I use the uh, hang up feature on my radios. So when I have the microphone out of the hanger, I, it puts the radio in monitor mode, so I would hear CSQ basically. And then uh, when I put the microphone in the hanger, it, go, it enables the uh, uh, tone squelch. So uh, I wouldn't hear an ID if my microphone was in its hanger. But I would hear the ID if my microphone was out of the hanger. So now we're going to go over here to modes. I uh, only have one channel here. That's all we need. I'm going to configure a wideband channel and I am going to use uh, for receive I'm going to use 467.700 megahertz and my tone is going to be one hundred and eighteen point eight and we're going to set a 60 second timeout timer and it's going to be configured for high power which is 10 watts in this case uh, expand is not a feature that you need for wideband my transmit frequency I'm going to go ahead and copy that over so I only have to change one digit is going to be 462 700 and then I'm actually going to change the tone to 151.4 just for giggles and grins so that's all we need to do there and now we can simply write the radio now typically whenever you read a new radio for the first time you will want the first thing you will want to do is save the code plug. I've already done that. I have a handful of these repeaters lying around. Not a big deal for me. Uh, but that way if you ever mess something up or have a failure to write, you have a good code plug. And with that, once we get a confirm, the, rate, the repeater will be reprogrammed and ready to run on GMRS. and it's successful so that's all there is to it now we can go out and use the repeater hope you enjoyed this video and I tried to keep it short and sweet thanks for watching